Hi there and welcome to Bustanet. Yes, this is a special guide for people on the Discord channel. Um, it focuses on how you can break down defensive sides in the Football Manager. Now, um, FM19 is has seen some changes. More significantly, within tactics, you have this defensive shape right now. Defensive shape is uh, a way for you to protect your horizontal and vertical channels. It's also a way for you to um, deny teams chances of uh, getting the ball. Now, how does that work? The thing here is the line of engagement basically tells your team um, when to start closing down. Basi it essentially works like this. It's not a trigger, close down now. It's in relationship to who is playing, who you're playing against, the formation that you're playing against. So when they bring the ball forward, your line of engagement, if you play a maximum line of engagement, basically what you're telling them is, okay, when you bring the ball out, what I want you to do is, I want you to shut them down straight away. Now, if you play on higher mentalities, what you'll see is, your fullbacks step up very early. Here you can see what a 4 3 one 2 looks like. I'm playing with a high line of engagement. I'm also playing with a high defensive line. Look at how my fullbacks are positioned. They're very high up the pitch. Um, this is to exert as much pressure as I can on the opposition so that they are not allowed to bring the ball out of their own box. I mean, granted, we scored a goal with our first move of the day. But when you play with a high line of engagement, you're basically telling, the, uh, you're telling your boys to start closing down immediately uh, when the ball is played into your half. Now, if your boys lose the ball here, or if they start to build up play, your boys will tend to drop back and you know drop back and form a tight defense, which is exactly what we're supposed to be seeing in the game. So if you want a your fullbacks to close down as high up the pitch as possible, then you've got to look at your line of engagement coupled with your mentality. Now, if your mentality was low and you played a high line of engagement, chances are you're probably doing it somewhere around here. I'm playing with an aggressive mentality, so it's somewhere around here. Now that it works very closely with mentality because it, mentality is uh, about risk. So if you want your fullbacks to do things like this, like you know your midfielders to close down in the opposition half, then essentially what you're doing is you are not allowing the opposition time and space to get the ball out of your own half. How do you do this? Okay, a lot of teams are going to start playing defensively once you start reaching a certain level. Here against the Brighton, we are playing against a 4-1-4-1 with a DM. It's not, but it's not something that the 4 3 one really likes. So with a DM, you can see that it's going to be really tough. What we did instead was we knew that we were going to be faced with a team that is going to be extremely defensive. Now, this is the caveat. If you have a good side, you can afford to do this. If you have a really poor side, then you've got to think about hitting teams on the break and keeping a tight defensive shape. Here... Because Liverpool have very fast players. Here we got Robertson. Uh, Robertson is, uh, I think he's got acceleration of 17 or 16, 15. And on the other side, we got Alexander Arnold, who's 16, anticipation is 15. So these boys are very strong mentals. When you have very strong mentals, you can afford, and strong physicals, you can afford to play a high line. So we're playing a high defensive line, which tells our boys to be further up the pitch. So now we are playing against a team that is uh, very defensive. So what we are doing is we are playing high up the pitch, not letting them have any uh, chances to bring the ball up. We are also playing with aggressive mentality so that these guys are positioned so high up the pitch. The moment their wingers get the ball, they are already under pressure. So the, the wingers are always defending. Now, this is one way to break a defensive side down because here, what I'm doing is I'm using a lot of uh, aggressive mentalities. There's a big risk in doing this because if you play with a weaker side and you do something like this, this channel is very big, which means that you're vulnerable to two things. One, the ball over the top naturally. And the second thing is, um, you know, if, you're, if your three midfielders can't win the ball, can't control possession, then you'll lose the ball. So what I've done in this game is here, I like to use roles and duties, and I like to use players with off the ball. Like, for example, here's a Cairo but I like him because he arrives late in the opponent's area. So this gives me, this, this brings me to my second point. When you want to break a defensive side down, you literally are putting pressure on them and getting more players in and around the box. So here we have a, we have a player. Generally, I like to get him to dictate tempo. 
Uh, here we have a Mazala attacking. Now, this is a combination of roles that is hopes to keep the ball on the left side of the pitch, unlocking space for Salah. In fact, when I played this system, Salah saw six goals within the first three games. Uh, and then we've got a wing back bombing on this way. So we get we we apply a lot of pressure on teams right from the get go. So this is in other words, if you face a defensive side, you have to look for three things. The first thing that you look out for is can you keep the ball? Because you're looking for the transition from defense midfield to attack. That's what you're looking for. If you don't see that, then you're not controlling the game. You need to be able to control the game. Here, uh, in another match, we played against Arsenal. Right? Arsenal were playing with a defensive. Uh, this was really embarrassing because Unai Emery came in with a double DM. Right? So here again, when we played the game, um, it was all about keeping the ball away from Arsenal for large periods of time. Arsenal began the game, uh, and I decided here in this particular game, because Arsenal is a bit better, I decided to drop the line of engagement a bit more. So I didn't play with a maximum line of engagement. I instead played with a slightly lower line of engagement, just one notch down, so that I would encourage Arsenal out, so that I could hit Arsenal on the break. So with some sides, what you end up doing is... Um, if you are a bit worried about them, uh, you think that in this particular case, I was worried about the double DM because the double DM me uh, is going to wreak havoc on my uh, my style of play. My style of play essentially depends on the AMC to do something with the ball. But the AMC now has got to get away from two defensive midfielders. So instead of, uh, so instead of camping in their half, I opted to draw them out slightly by changing only the line of engagement because the line of engagement uh, tells your team when to let them out. I mean, we, we did concede a goal early, but we managed to come back and put three past them. So it was a, it was a pretty good performance from us. Uh, again, you can see how we play with the attacking wing backs, trying to bring the ball up. We don't have enough bodies inside the box. So these guys, these guys have to just drop in the crosses uh, to some of our players another way of playing it would have been for me not to um, encourage play down the flanks when I encourage play down the flanks when I don't want to encourage play down the flanks what I normally do is uh, I play on a very narrow width so um, overlap left and overlap right was used in this 4-3-1-2 just to influence how high up the pitch they would be now another way of playing it would have been uh, to you here again, we played uh, Benfica. Benfica also were playing with a defensive formation. Uh, in, and here, we played with a different, um, different formation ourselves because I, put, I think that Liverpool are more suited to this system instead. So here again, we played with, play with a wing back on attack, inside forward on uh, attack later in the half. And then we played with a player who likes to arrive in the opposition box. We played a Pocha, uh, Mazala on attack, and then inside forward. So, uh, once more, the whole goal here is to hem them in. Don't allow them to bring the ball out. So, each, each time they bring the ball out, we have players closing down. If they win the ball, um, they usually there's only one player. We are able to bring the ball up quickly uh, and then uh, look for opportunities. Now, because you're playing on a very aggressive mentality, your boys are always going to look forward and try to get the ball into the box. So, if you're playing against a defensive side, you have two options. One, you can be a bit more patient. You lower the mentality, but you keep your line engagement. Uh, you slow down your tempo, you work the ball around looking for opportunities, but then there's a stack defense, right? So it's going to be a lot harder. Um, then you're depending on personal skill, player skill to break down sides. Or in my particular case, I call this brute force, which is uh, you play on a higher attacking mentality. Uh, you play with a few more attacking duties to get them into uh, the third and uh, you do your best to break them down. So uh, here, uh, it's an all-encompassing game. So uh, what you want to do when you're playing against defensive sides is simply this. Okay, look at your tactic. Step one, identify your players in the system. Now, first thing, whatever tactic, it, this, this, it doesn't matter what system you're using. The first thing you got to see is if you're winning all your games at home and then when you go away from home, you find teams are very defensive, you need to look at your own tactics to ask yourself whether there is an option B. Can you um, get some of your players further up the pitch? How do you know when you when can you do this? If you're dominating possession in the game, definitely you can do this. You have you can take some risks. So if you watch my movement into channels video where I talk about uh, how to defend your channels, it's very simple. Based on that video, all you gotta remember is this: these are your channels. So if you want your boys to protect the this horizontal channel, you bring this down. 
If you want your boys to give up the flanks and just uh, make sure that the spaces in between these players are narrow, then you play on a narrow width. So um, remember how you want to defend, where you're going to win the ball. Now, if you're going to play aggressively, which is a brute force system, then you need players for that. So you, you basically have a better team than the opposition. But if you have a shitty team and you have the worst possible team in the land, then you don't want brute force. Brute force is too dangerous. So what I normally do with shitty teams is I, I drop my line of engagement and then I change my style of passing. I might go direct, risky. I might not overlap with two because it's way too risky. I might just overlap with one <laughs> if, I, if I really want to try and score. This depends on whether or not the team is better than me. If the team, uh, when you look at the Steady Bridge Diaries, I play very differently. Uh, with Steady Bridge, I, I, it's literally the same system, but you don't see me having so many attack duties in my, uh, in my team. It's more about holding your shape, being defensively organized, and hitting teams on the break. So uh, in this particular case, it's all about managing this side and then hitting them on the break. Now, all you got to do with a poorer team is maybe regroup and then hit them on the counter. And once again, the question is, when you get the ball to the opposite end of the pitch, do you have enough players getting into the box here? In this system, we have like a, a Mazala on attack. Maybe if I was playing with Staley Bridge, this guy would become a fullback on support. This guy could become a complete wingback or a wingback on attack. But this becomes a very open, uh, very risky uh, setup for us. So I'll probably go Mazala on support with, uh, with a poorer side. And then this could be a lot more stable in the sense that I'm not over committing with this Mazala. So this Mazala, because we have an overlap left on the left flank, this guy is pretty high up the pitch. So I'm not over committing with this Mazala. I could alternatively move the Mazala to this side of the pitch and then try and build my play up here and then hope that the Mazala has got uh, switch balls to the other flank, which is uh, something I want to avoid. Uh, so you could also play on lower mentalities to keep the ball because when you're a weaker team and you face teams that put a lot of pressure on you, then what you're trying to do is your, your, your priority has to be to be able to work the ball out because if they put pressure on you and you just move the ball, then you're giving them back the ball and you're back to square one. So with, with weaker teams, generally, you want to look at your team instructions, like regroup. Then you want to look at narrowing the gap between um, the horizontal channels. You also want to identify whether or not you should be defending narrow or wide. Personally speaking, there are very, very few systems in FM that need to defend wide. If you want to defend wide, then you up your mentality slightly uh, or you play with a slightly higher line of engagement. But generally speaking, I avoid, if I'm a weaker team, I have to make a, you have to make a choice. Do you give up the flanks or do you give up the middle? But when you're a stronger team, you don't have to worry about the choice because you can have, you can have your cake and eat it too. So if you're playing with a strong team, it's just a matter of throwing more attack duties. If you play with a weaker team, it's about hit, uh, judiciously thinking about how you're going to... Uh, it's, it's a lot more challenging when you're playing with a weaker team. Because with a weaker team, you got to think about movement. you got to think about the players who are moving into the channels. you got to think about how you're going to control the ball. you got to look at players. you you got to be very, very selective of how, how you pick uh, your players. This is the reason why I like FM19. In FM18 and FM17, you could brute force your way through anything, you know. The, the, the AI just couldn't play defensively. Now FM19, the AI can finally play defensively. I, and I understand the challenge that most people are having. A lot of people are finding this game very, very difficult because they, they win a couple of matches and then once the AI re-rates them and starts playing defensively against them, they start struggling. But that's, that's the best time. You see, when the AI starts playing defensively against you, and if you can hold on to possession... What you do is you start thinking about how you can throw more bodies into attack or come up with a system that allows, gives you many, many options. Now, one of the best systems in the game is actually this, the 4-1-2-3. The 4-1-2-3 is easily one of the most dynamic, resilient systems in the game. It's like a 4-3-1-2, except it's got wide options. Uh, it can penetrate through the middle with this player, which for a weaker side, this would mean that this guy has to be a bit more defensively orientated. This, this system is very different. This is my Liverpool 4123, which rips through teams because we have a very simple setup. We have a Mazala punching through the middle. He works very closely with the inside forward. We got a wing back coming down this way, giving us a flank attacks. 
And then if these players keep the ball well enough, then we got the uh, Salah either coming in to score goals or deliver crosses into the box, which are fed by other players. And uh, when we played against Benfica, Benfica were destroyed by our attack. I mean, we, we played reasonably well against Benfica. I was very happy with the way we played against Benfica. And uh, even though Benfica, we allowed Benfica out of the box a couple of times because we lowered our line of engagement. But there was very little that Benfica could do to uh, match the way we were playing. Now, don't forget that in your corner routines and your throwing routines, you can also set your systems up to close down long shots. Uh, it's, a, it's a matter of uh, choosing who you want at the edge of area and who you want going back. So the next time you play this game and you've reached a point where you need to break down defensive sides and it's frustrating. Think about, look at it this way. You should be happy because the AI itself finally sees you as a threat. If the AI continues to play attacking against you, it means the AI doesn't, it looks at you and go, is going, ha, what a challenge this guy is posing to us. He's no, ha, he's no challenge. Then if you find that the AI is starting to play defensively against you, you should, you should look at it from a positive point of view. That the AI finally has uh, looked at you and seen you as a threat. And that's the game of football manager that, you know, um, we have at the moment. Uh, finally, the AI can defend. And uh, all you got to think about now is setting up your defense, right, with the right defensive shape and the right players. And then coming out and uh, working out how you want to score goals against defensively minded teams. Because sometimes it can be frustrating. Like here, you can see we are, tr we are playing a very defensive Benfica. And it took us quite a while to break Benfica down. We kept the possession numbers. We allowed Benfica out of their box. We kept, a, uh, we kept our shape for 90 minutes. We didn't do anything different. We played our 4-2-3. And uh, eventually, we beat Benfica by three goals to nil. I think our first goal must have been a simple goal. Uh, yep, I like this positioning of money. So... Uh, Alexander Mo Salah, yeah, Mane scored the first goal. It was not offside. Our second goal, uh, pressure on them. Uh, they played the ball from the back. And then Allison picks it up, brings it forward, looks at Salah. This is true to Salah and Salah. Finds Chamberlain and Chamberlain back. Actually, this was a nice goal because uh, Allison brings the ball up, plays it up. Now look, look at what Chamberlain does. He back heals the ball to Mane. So there's variety in our goals. And our final goal came from the back as well. Um, Allison throws the ball out to Robertson. It's a very simple attacking move. And then Robertson plays the perfect pass for Firmino and Firmino makes it three. You, 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 have to, you have to know your system. You need to know how your players can play. You need to know who. Basically, you want to spend a lot of time Understanding your own players. That's very important because here in our, this with this Liverpool team, this team is very, very interesting because A, I got Wijnaldum arrives late in opponent's area. Against, whenever I need to unlock a side, he comes off the bench. If I find that I need to break a defensive team down, I will take off Fabinho and put on Jorginho Wijnaldum because Jorginho Wijnaldum arrives late in the opponent's half. So he brings something extra to this role. If it's the 4 3 1 2, he comes on as a Carrillo. So at the Ox, he gets forward whenever possible, cuts inside with both and runs with ball off. And perfect Manzala. So I get him to play in this position, so he runs all the way here. Mane, he cuts inside from both wings, runs with ball off, and gets into opposition, moves into the channel. So he will occupy the defenders. So we've got a lot of uh, boys with nice player traits that I'm trying to use. Runs with ball off and cuts inside from right wing, likes to try to beat offside trap. So he is also going to be on the shoulder of players. So we, you, you got to look at your attributes as well and to see how you can, how you can leverage um, the traits versus what you're trying to achieve. Well, I hope you enjoyed this short little guide on uh, how to break down defensive sides. If you have any questions, please look me on Discord and ask away. And if you need follow-up videos, please let me know and I'll try and get them out for you. You guys take care. Have a good one. I'll see you again soon.